Here we go, another league lowdown, and this time we're heading to the gateway to Asia and exotic Turkey. A nation steeped in historical significance, and where cities straddle two continents. A place where areas of outstanding natural beauty are seemingly in abundance. Where grand bazaars are full of shoppers trying to decide which of Turkey's specialities they're going to purchase today. Because this is a nation that takes its teas as seriously as it takes its sweet treats. And where for a modest sum you can head to the local bath and get smothered in washing up liquid. But the best views are all outdoors from ones that seem otherworldly to those best enjoyed from above, to those that are down by the ocean, or on the beach. This is a selfie taker's paradise, but anybody that follows football knows that Turkey is a nation in love with the beautiful game. So let's investigate the range of clubs you could take charge of in FM21 in the League Lowdown Guide to Turkey. Welcome back to the League Lowdown. This time we are in Turkey and yet again we have been blessed with the assistance of somebody that knows football in this part of the world pretty well. Dodgy Gamer, the YouTuber extraordinaire, used to live and work in Turkey, taking a keen interest still in all things Turkish football. So thank you very much to him for his help doing the research for this episode. But without further ado, let's dive into it and have a look at the league structure that they use in the Turkish League. For the current season in Turkey's Super League, there are 21 teams competing in it, but they are reducing that number down to 20 for next season. The way they're doing that is relegating four clubs and only promoting three. The top two in Turkey both qualify for the Champions League, and the bottom four this season are going to drop down to the playable second division in Turkey. An 18-team division, but you'll see that three teams from that can get relegated down to the playable second league or third tier of Turkish football. Delightfully, there are two different groups stacked full of teams that you could take charge of, providing you with almost 40 clubs that you could guide for a lower league challenge in Turkish football. So that's how the league structure works, but we need to start looking at the clubs that you might like to manage, starting with Turkey's big three. Football in Turkey is dominated by the so-called Big Three who get their name because they're the three clubs that have won the Turkish Super League the most time since its creation in the 1950s. And before that decade, football was still organised on a regional basis in Turkey. All three hail from the city of Istanbul, two from the European side of the Bosphorus Strait and one from the Asian side. One of those clubs that hails from the European side is Galatasaray who have a huge 52,000 capacity stadium that comes alive for derby days and European nights. And this club has had some European nights domestically. They have the most titles of any club in Turkey. 22 Super League titles, 18 cup competitions as well. But there were a couple of seasons there where they were also riding the crest of a European wave. Led by Romanian talisman Georgi Haji, they won the 2000 UEFA Cup, beating Arsenal on penalties in Denmark. And then the next season, they took on Champions League winners Real Madrid in the Super Cup and they beat them on a golden goal in extra time as well. For a club with such a successful past, they don't necessarily have the facilities that are as good as you might think. They've only got adequate training facilities and adequate youth recruitment. And their academy coaching is likewise. And they only have fairly basic youth recruitment. So certainly work to do on the facilities front if you take over. But they are the club that has the most trophies of any in Turkey. But they have two very fierce rivals in their own city. The first of those are Fenerbahce, who come from the Asian side of the Bosphorus Strait. They've got a 47,000 capacity stadium of their own, founded in 1907 by a group of Turkish youths who founded the club in secret because the ruling Ottoman Empire frowned 
upon young Turks participating in what they saw as an English pursuit. This club are also very successful. The Yellow Canaries, as they are nicknamed, have won the Turkish Cup six times and they've won that Super League 19 times as well. No European trophies for Fenerbahce. They've managed to reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League and the semi-finals of the Europa League as well, all since the turn of the millennium. But they've never been able to reach a European final. Maybe that's a challenge that you would like to take on. They have slightly better facilities than Galatasaray in Football Manager. Great training facilities, good youth facilities, adequate academy coaching, and fairly basic youth recruitment as well. So developing your own academy product will be difficult at both Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. So there's two of the big three. I think it's time to check in with the third. And that club is Besiktas, the Black Eagles, as they are known, hail from the European side of the Bosphorus, have a 41,000 capacity stadium that is tucked right next door to the palace that was the administrative centre of the Ottoman Empire. They were founded in 1903, but they don't have quite as many titles as their two Istanbul rivals. They've got nine Turkish Cups, 13 Super Leagues. Their most successful spell was in the early 90s when they had an English coach by the name of Gordon Milne leading them. They don't have European trophies in their cabinet, although they have reached the quarterfinals of both the Champions League and the Europa League. But again, their facilities perhaps are in need of a little bit of an update. They might have great training facilities, but the youth facilities and junior coaching are described by football manager as just adequate, and the youth recruitment is only fairly basic as well. So definitely the big three pose a challenge in terms of trying to compete against the other two to be the top force in Turkish football, but there are some other clubs out there emerging as newer challenges for Turkey's top titles. And the club currently leading that charge are Bishak Shahir, another team from Istanbul. But whereas the rest of the big three have never been relegated since the Super League was founded in the 1950s, well, Bishak Shahir weren't founded themselves until the 1990s and have only recently made their way into the top division. But last season, they became the first club outside of the big three to win the Turkish title in more than a decade. That is their first Turkish title but they are now emerging as a fourth club from Istanbul that is regularly looking to compete for honours. So if you like the idea of taking charge of a team that is on the up but is outside the traditional big three, well, Bashak here are definitely an interesting proposition. But a club that's surprising many people at the moment in Turkish football is Orlanya Sport. They hail from a beach resort on the southern coast of Turkey. And last season, while the big three struggled... While well, Orlania Sport finished above both Galatasaray and Fenerbahce to finish fifth in the season. But they're also riding high this campaign as well, currently sitting second in the table behind Fenerbahce with games in hand as well. They don't have an awful lot of pedigree. Much of their history has been spent in Turkey's lower divisions. But if you like the idea of taking charge of a club that is a smaller proposition but might just be able to challenge their more illustrious neighbours, well, Orlania Sport are definitely a club to look at. Well, if we're looking for a sleeping giant, if we hit the northeast coast, heading towards the border with Georgia, we will find the city of Trabzon, where Trabzon Spore hail from. A 41,000 capacity stadium awaits a manager that takes charge of this club, as does a rich history as well. They are the only side in Turkey outside the big three that wear a star above their crest because they've won five titles. They've actually won six in total, spanning the 1970s and the 1980s. They've won the Turkish Cup nine times as well and are the current Turkish Cup holders. And if you like the idea of taking charge of a club that might not have experienced a league title that recently, but has had spells in its history where it was the nation's leading club, while well, Traps on Spore are one of those giants with a huge following that you might be able to use to take on the big three with. If you're looking for another top flight club that might be capable of challenging the big three, well, maybe research Siversport. They've got a 27,500 capacity stadium 
And the highest place they've finished in their history is second. They finished fourth last time around qualifying for the Europa League. They've never won a cup competition in Turkey. But over recent seasons, they've been consistently in the top half of the league. And they might be another club that you might be able to build into a side capable of taking on Istanbul's biggest clubs. Another club that you might be able to build to challenge the big three in Turkey is Karşim Pasha, a club whose stadium is named after the current president of the nation. They were founded in 1921. Unfortunately, they've never managed to win either the Super League or a cup, but they've got a trophy cabinet waiting to be filled. They are another club from football mad Istanbul. And if you like the idea of taking a smaller team and trying to build them up into a challenging force in the nation, well, Karsh and Pasha are certainly worth checking out. Before we head down to the lower leagues, let's just look at one more club in the top division that you could take charge of. This is Hatay Spor, who were crowned champions of the second division last season and have been promoted to the Super League for the first time this year. They don't have much history of note. They hail from right in the south of Turkey, near the Syrian border. But in real life, they're doing a very good job of competing in their first season at this level. Currently, they sit in mid-table. And if you like the idea of taking charge of one of Turkey's less fashionable clubs as your project for Football Manager 21, well, this might be another one that you could check out. In a nation dominated by just three clubs, it's hard to find others out there that have experienced success. But if we drop into the second tier, we will find Bursa Sport, a well-supported club with a 43,000 capacity stadium, who've had a couple of momentous seasons in their history. In the 1980s, they became one of just a few clubs outside the big three ever to lift the Turkish Cup. But in 2010, they shocked Turkish football by actually managing to rob the league title away from all three of Istanbul's big clubs. The season after, they celebrated by signing Kenny Miller for their European campaign. But currently they're languishing down in the second tier. So if you like the idea of trying to restore a club that has had a couple of very momentous seasons, well, this is definitely a club that might interest you. Many players of Football Manager like the idea of starting out in the lowest playable division. And in Turkey, that's the third tier. And there are a host of clubs that you could take charge of at that level. One of the clubs with an interesting story hails from the capital of Ankara, and that club is Demir Spor, who, in 1959, were one of the founders of the Turkish Super League. But they were relegated from that level in 1971 and have not returned since. But before the formation of the Super League, when Turkish football was still played on a regional basis, Demir Spor managed to win the national title by winning the Ankara League and then going into a knockout competition where they beat the other leading teams from Turkey as well. So if you like the idea of taking charge of a club in the third division, but one that does have a little bit of history, well, that's one option for you. Another team playing their trade in Turkey's third tier is Karabukspor, nicknamed the Blue Flame. They were formed by workers at the steel plant in the city. And recently they've been playing Super League football, but they've suffered back-to-back -back relegations and are also struggling in the third tier this season. If you like the idea of guiding a club back to the divisions that they've been relegated from, well, Karabukspor are the club that you should take charge of. So there's the league lowdown guide to Turkey. This is a nation in football manager where if you take charge of one of the biggest teams, you're going to have two rivals snapping at your heels. But maybe you like the challenge of taking charge of a club outside of the big three and going head to head with those dominant forces. We're going to see you very soon because we've got plenty of other countries to make the focus of our next league lowdown.